Hi. So this is a slightly different format video for me on the grounds that it's not actually a video at all. Um, and the reason for that is because I started this project about 15 years ago before I had a YouTube channel and before I was making videos. So unfortunately, it's just a series of photographs. So I bought this joystick about 20 years ago and was really pleased with it, worked really well. But the problem I had is that as I upgraded my computer, there were less and less um, circuit, board, circuit boards, adding cards and less and less support for game port uh, joysticks. Everything was moving across to USB. So about 15 years ago, I decided that I would upgrade this joystick to USB and that would be great. Unfortunately, when I took it apart, that was a little bit beyond my technical capabilities at the time. I found in the handle this little circuit board with these chips on it um, which at the time I wasn't able to work out what they were although now I think I could do it quite easily especially being able to look up data sheets on the internet um, so I took all the chips off it <laughs> um, and tried different things I really wasn't sure what to do with it so that that really didn't work this is the the kind of like the motherboard from the base of the joystick I didn't do anything with that, so that just remained in, in the base. So I looked at it, I tried different things, couldn't work out what to do, so I put it all in a box, and it sat in a box for the next 15 years. Until one day I was watching a video by Zach Friedman, who was expounding how great Teensies were, and one of the things he covered was the fact that they had a USB host interface. And suddenly it twigged. I thought, wow, that could be the answer to my USB joystick problem. So I had a look at it. I didn't have any Tinksies. Um, but the USB host seemed to be a good idea. And I looked at the different Arduinos that I had. And I had an Arduino Pro Micro. So I thought, right. So I did a bit more digging and decided, yep, yeah, this, this is what I'm going to do. So I downloaded a copy of Easy EDA and designed my own circuit board or circuit boards for the joystick so this one over here on the right is a small circuit board to go in the handle and this one here is one larger one which holds the pro micro which goes in the base so a couple of things to call out here first of all easy eda was just an astounding piece of software. I've downloaded a number of different circuit board design software over over the years. Um, and I've just got to call out Easy EDA. I'm in no way affiliated to them, but I downloaded it. It just worked. There was a bit of a learning curve on it, but it was so robust. I've never used such a robust piece of software. It never fell over, not once. Did not one hang, not one loss of data, nothing. So if you're looking for circuit design software or circuit board design software, Easy EDA is absolutely rock solid. The only thing, the only one problem I had was it had a predefined Pro Micro um, outline, which I just loaded into the board and, and uh, used. And it was only once they'd arrived and I tried to plug my Pro Micro into it that I discovered that this wasn't the same size as my Pro Micro. My Pro Micro is one row of holes wider. So if you're loading up any predefined boards or ready-made boards or whatever, you know, other than standard resistors and what have you, check the dimensions. Fortunately, I was able to bend the pins in it and it fitted, but that could have been a complete disaster. Um, this circuit board is just simply um, a series of uh, diodes to uh, handle the, the, all the different button presses. It's based on this circuit, which I've found on the internet. So basically it just supports 36 different buttons and the diode is there to stop ghosting if you press more than one button at a time. Um, so that's it for that really. The next picture then, so here you can see the original circuit board and here you can see the circuit board which I made. Now, interestingly here, I miscalculated the site, the positioning for this hole and the size, but fortunately, I don't actually use hat four. So I've got hat one, hat two, hat three. There isn't a hat four. 
and then I've got triggers and then coming off it I've got rows columns and some other some uh, other buttons that don't fall into one of these categories so that's that sits there nicely in there there's one screw that goes in and this is the joystick then very similar to what it was before in my original design what i thought of when i took it apart i thought i could just run all the wires down this central central hole in the in the joystick shaft but by the time i'd connected up all the wires and worked out how many i needed there just was too many wires to fit down this central hole and th that would have created wear and strain on the, on the wires so i couldn't go ahead with that that was my original intention so i had to rebuild this small circuit board here that processed all the switches and sent the signals down that's just a close-up shot this one's an interesting one so the trigger switch there's two switches here um one on the spring which is the first trigger and then this second one just uses a little piece of foam um to press it at a, a slightly later position i had I, i've just found a piece of piece of uh, dense foam and, and cut that up and put that in the original foam had, had um, deteriorated um all this all the switches worked fine and just another shot and a close-up you can see the screws in place there and the hat switch, hat four switch, as you can see, is not used. And here's a shot from the other side. More switches, uh, more hats, and more wires going through. Now, here's the base. See, I've taken out the original board and just put in the the Arduino. And there's different connectors here. So these two wire, the, the wire coming down here has got two connectors on it one for the columns and one for the rows. And then here I've got an X axis for one of these, a Y axis for the other one. And I've included on the board, if, if I do any different joysticks, I've got more functions, there's a Z axis and there's a throttle input as well. But I haven't got those on this, on this joystick. So you can see here, uh, at the moment it's potentiometer based and it uses these little gear mechanisms to connect to the to the gimbal of the joystick to actually rotate the potentiometer. So I decided to move away from potentiometers and, and use um, Hall Effect magnet sensors. And uh, we'll get on to that in the next one. That's just a close up of the board. You can see here that I've had to bend in the pins and then get them to go down the hole in the same on this side. Very luckily that fitted in. Just another shot. Right, so here are the magnets that are used in the in the hall sensors. If you've taken a hard disk apart, you'll recognize these. These are the magnets from the head assembly that, that, that allows the head to move back and forth across the disk. And I took these, I just took the disk apart, separated these, and I just gripped the metal end in a vise. And then the other end of the metal piece, I just grabbed with a pair of pliers, big pair of pliers, and just bent it so that it curved away from this magnet and the magnet just came away from from the back it's it's glued on somehow i'm not not, not quite sure what with but by bending the metal away from the magnet the magnet stayed straight and just separated from the disc so i got two magnets uh, that just came off those connectors and here's a shot of the the joystick or the base here with it with the main parts of the get the gimbals removed you can see i've attach this magnet here i've just stuck it on with super glue uh, onto this shaft so that it rotates back and forth about that axis yeah you can see a better shot there now this is one point i hadn't really thought through the design here so unfortunately the sensor boards with the hall effect sensors on i had to make those out of perf board next time if i do any more i'll i'll build those out of uh proper circuit boards and get them built and delivered but it's it's only a small piece it's functional so there's three wires there's the hall effect sensor it's it's a uh, proportional sensor um, obviously so it detects the, the the position of the of the magnet rather than just being a simple on off and those two mount the two holes there just for the screws and you can see I've drilled through into the bracket I've drilled two holes and mounted those on with standoffs. So you can see there's the Hall Effect sensor there. 
and then there's the magnet that, that, that controls it. I think that because this base is made of aluminium, that it doesn't interfere with the magnetic field passing across there. If they'd been made of steel, I'm not sure if it would have done. But anyway, it, it doesn't. And there's the X and the Y axis, or vice versa. I'm not quite sure which at this point. Um, next picture. Right, so here's just a shot from the top. Here's the connectors attached to the wires. They'll plug onto the X and X and Y axis button, uh, connectors. Another shot there. Okay, we're coming down the middle. You can see that that's nice and loose, so that won't be binding as the joystick moves back and forth. And then here we go is a shot of the uh, whole thing connected up. So you can see the X axis and the Y axis connected. You can see the columns and the rows connected there. And here you'll notice the strain relief I've plugged in. I've just, I've just used a standard USB cable um, and then just curved it around, um, put a cable tie on it to just create a blockage and then that, that creates the uh, strain relief. And then this piece is just loose and, and not putting any strain if that cable gets pulled on the on the connector into the into the pro micro so let's have a, a demo of the the actual joystick here it is is as it appears in game controllers i did a bit of digging on youtube and i found a chap called dan's tech box and uh he had a way of actually changing the name of the 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 pro micro when it comes up in the usb display so i used that and this now comes up as f22 joystick usb which is a a nice little touch to it. Um, so if we go into properties, this pops up and you can see um, all the different um, pieces of the joystick here. Now let's just, you can do some camera in camera editing and we'll see what goes on here. So if you look here, we've got the trigger so pull the trigger position one and position two and then we've got three and four you can see the main hat comes up and it has all the individual positions the there's no push on the hat so you can see that nothing's happened when i push on it but the other um, hats all work you can see it moves when i do the joystick the z-axis and the throttle don't don't move as there's nothing connected but they they appear um and basically that's it it's 18 18 buttons listed um every single one of them works absolutely perfectly so i hope you like this video or series of stills and i hope it's proved useful if, if this inspires some of you to rebuild your own joysticks then uh Hope that works. Anyway, as ever, if you like the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll do some more. I have also got um, from the same set a uh, weapons control system, which is also in need of an upgrade. So that's got a throttle controller in it as well. So I'm not quite sure how I'll do that, whether I'll connect that to this as it used to be, or whether I'll just set it up as a completely standalone standalone item um, probably the latter actually rather than have the two connected together but uh, yeah so I hope you've enjoyed the video thanks bye